In this video, I'll be talking about how to find the domain of a function, and we're going to focus mainly on polynomial, square root, and rational functions. So I want you to keep that in mind, because uh, if, as long as you understand the, the three types of functions, then actually finding the domain of a function is, is pretty easy. So again, polynomial, and you should write this down, polynomial square root and see if you can remember what I said and see if you can even think about what that even means uh, the third one would be rational okay ask me in class how I remember what a rational function is so polynomial functions can be constants it can be linear like um, 2x and then quadratic, x squared, and then beyond that, x cubed, x to the fourth, and so forth. But the main ones that we're going to be talking about are going to be constants, linear, and quadratic. And linear, as long as the x, uh, the exponent of the x is a 1 here, and as long as the exponent of the x is a 0 here, or any other constant would be, uh, would be fine. So the square root functions would be uh, just like that, where you have y equals, I should put it in blue, y equals something like the square root of x minus 4. And so you have limitations on what x can be, what you're allowed to plug in. And a rational function would just be the kind of function in which you have a, I should be consistent here, in which you have a polynomial function. I'll just say polynomial over polynomial, okay? So that would be what a rational function is, polynomial divided by a polynomial. And again, in, uh, in this case, you've got a denominator, so you're going to have some possible issues. And in the case of the square root function, you're going to have stuff under the square root. You know you can't have something less than zero there. But then the polynomial functions, no, yeah, no issues with those. So if you can recognize the polynomial functions, the domain is always all real numbers. Uh, and this just gives you a quick overview. If it's polynomial, domain is all real numbers. If it's a square root function, whatever is under the square root, anything that's under the square root, no matter what it is, it must be non-negative. And then, so that's the restriction on what x can be. And then if you have a rational function, then whatever's in the denominator, it just needs to make sure, you just need to make sure that whatever's in the denominator is not going to ever equal zero because if you plug in an x that makes the denominator zero, then you're going to get a, uh, an unacceptable x, and so that would not be a part of the domain. It's like pushing the wrong part of the vending machine. So we want to see what part of the vending machines can we, what parts of the vending machine can we push, and that's what I mean by finding the acceptable inputs. So let's do a couple examples uh, on the next slide here. First example would be y equals 3x squared minus 1, and 3x squared minus 1, you should immediately recognize that the, this function is a polynomial function, specifically a quadratic, and so therefore the domain is all real numbers. And using interval notation, we would say the domain is from negative infinity to infinity. So I'll try to use both notations. I don't really care what kind of notation you use, as long as I know you know what you're talking about. Okay. Uh, any constant, in like 2 to the negative third power, 2 to the negative third, kind of dressed up that constant a little bit. The domain, again, it is a constant, so you can plug in any value of x. In fact, the output's always going to be the same because that's what it means to be constant. And the domain, again, is all real numbers. So, so, so we yawn a little bit when we're dealing with polynomial functions because the domain is always all real numbers. And so let's... Let's spice it up a little bit. Let's uh, let's take a look and make it a square root function. So y equals the square root of x minus 1. And I think we did this one in class. Where x minus 1 has to be greater than or equal to 0. So the domain, is the restriction on the domain is that x minus 1 greater than or equal to 0. And when you add 1 to both sides, you you get the restriction that x must be greater than or equal to 1. And the way we write that using interval notation is the interval from 1 to infinity, including 1. And uh, either way, like I said. okay. So as long as what's under the radical is non-negative, then you have your restriction on what x can be, and that's what we call the domain. 
x plus 5. And we can't really do a whole lot with this. We could make a quadratic under there. We're going to get to that in the next section. Where um, Let's go ahead. Domain is x plus 5 greater than or equal to 0. So when you understand conceptually what's going on here, you can categorize the types of functions that you're finding the domain of, and you can easily find the domain. x is greater than or equal to negative 5, and uh, over here I'm going to go ahead and write interval notation. Never put a bracket around infinity, but the bracket around the value of x that x can be, and then that would be x equaling negative 5 and above. So um, there you go for polynomial functions. You have square root functions for numbers 3 and 4. And then let's take a look at some, uh, some rational functions. And uh, rational functions for right now, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do this one. This one looks interesting. Uh, no, sorry, I'm pausing. Hold on, let me pause. So finally, what we're going to talk about here is the finding the domain of rational functions. Again, as I said, you just need to make sure that the denominator is not zero. So the way we would write this is we would just write 1 minus x cannot be zero, and therefore if we add x to both sides, then we would get x is not allowed to be, x is not allowed to be 1. Okay, so we're just, we're just going to leave it like that. x cannot be 1. Okay, otherwise this function is defined for all other, all other real numbers. Okay, same with over here, x plus 1 over x minus 1 here, x minus 1 is not allowed to be equal to 0. So if x minus 1 is not allowed to equal 0, then x minus, as in x cannot equal 1, just like the one over there. I should have put a 4, let me just change that uh, to a 4, a 4, and then in purple, 4 and 4, so you have at least something different. Okay. And then over here, lower left, we have uh, y equals 1 over x squared minus 4. And so now we know that x squared minus 4 is not allowed to equal 0 because, again, if it's a rational function, no matter what the function is, as long as you have a denominator, that denominator is not allowed to equal 0. And so solving this one, though, is it can be... If you're not paying attention, you could miss one of them. So if x squared cannot equal 4 then when you take the square root of both sides, then you see here that x cannot equal, and make sure you get that negative as well, plus or minus 2, and so that would be the domain of the function. So all real numbers, x, such that, and really the, the best way to write it is uh, the domain, let me write it like this, domain is um, all real numbers, x, such that x cannot equal plus or minus 2. Okay? So that's that's a, a nicer way to write it, and that's probably the way you're going to see the answers in the back of the book. And then finally, uh, same thing over here. Whether you have an x plus 2 up here or not, oh yeah, that's why I wrote this one. So if you factor the numerator and factor the denominator, you, some students get into trouble here when they do too much work. In other words, if you if you went ahead and canceled those, you might be inclined to say that that x is just not allowed to equal two because you can go ahead and uh, cancel that factor. Well, in fact, that that's not necessarily the case. That's not the case at all. You have to always look back at the original function. The original function here, whether you can cancel the factors or not, you're still not allowed to plug in two to this original function because you'd get four over zero, and four over zero does not exist. So we have the same domain in this last problem that we did in the most recent, the one to the left, and the domain is again all real numbers x such that x cannot equal plus or minus 2. So I just wanted to show this example so you could see, oh, even if I can cancel, that doesn't mean that the, the functions are the same. Um, so these two functions are not the same, but they do have the same domain. You're not allowed to plug in 2 or negative 2. So that that's really it, guys. I hope that helps, and the work that you guys are going to be doing in class uh, on Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on when you have this class, uh, will go into depth a little bit more, but um, I will assign a couple more problems for you guys to practice with, and if you do happen to have any questions, please bring those questions in, and uh, we'll see you on the, during the next class.